Buddhism was the main religion in the Malay Peninsula until the 13th century. In Malaysia now, although predominantly an Islamic country, there is a sizable proportion of Buddhists, mainly of Chinese origin. However, despite having both Thai and Chinese Buddhist traditions, Malaysians are beginning to turn to the FWBO for a more contemporary way to practice. I'm visiting Malaysia because um, I was asked to speak at the Global Buddhist Conference in Kuala Lumpur. Social movements have uh, really captured the imagination of many young people. And uh, that happened because I had written an article for Dharma Life a couple of years ago. And the editor of Eastern Horizon, Benny Liao, he'd read my article and I think he wanted someone from the FWBO to talk at the conference. And actually, of course, impermanence is not easily understood by anyone. Once he'd got his speakers for the conference, he asked us all, would we stay on and give talks, Dharma talks, in Malaysia? And it seemed a wonderful opportunity. So that's what I did. And I asked Vajrasara, would she like to come? And we did a few talks together. When Dharma Loka had heard that I was coming to Malaysia, he said, would I like to come and join him on a retreat? in Malacca? Well, my interest in Malaysia is very much connected with my interest in China, really. I wish to help establishing our movement in China. Over the last few years, I had a number of opportunities to come to the East, and that did include Malaysia, where I was first last, well, early this year, actually, for a lecture tour. I met Boon Chung, whom, whom I had met in Birmingham a few years ago, but I wanted to renew our contact with him. And from that, the idea evolved to have a retreat here in Malacca, uh, which I'm very pleased we have been having. Now, we seem to have a lot on the, if you like, on the more emotional uh, side of skillful mental states. Can you think, if you think of well, I have been very inspired since my initial contact with the FWBO, but nothing very substantial materialized until uh, after the trip in 1999 to UK with Ivan Chan. And after returning from that trip, well, I was thinking of uh, having a class, a study group of sharing what I know uh, of the FWBO. Well, for one thing, FWBO is non-sectarian. It includes all the three major traditions. and. Um, then there is the, the other thing about FWO that it includes an exploratory element, which means we could explore it, the application of the Dharma from various different traditions to our lives. And I think that's quite valuable because uh, very often people just follow the particular rules or techniques, but not so much of the application to their lives. So it's just like having a technique and trying to fit the mind into the technique rather than applying the technique to its application in one's mind. Three years ago, I was in England on the convention and there was a Malaysian order member there who lives in UK. And he asked me to come to Malaysia on the way back home to New Zealand. It's called an interval or an intermediate state. Earlier this year in September, I came back and did a, a lecture tour and that was a longer stay. And now this is my, my third visit here. I think the retreat was successful in a number of ways. Perhaps most outstandingly, people now want to meditate. Yeah, and it seemed that quite a few of them, at least before the retreat, well, they thought it might be important for them to meditate, but they hadn't really found a way into meditation. In Malaysia, they have almost a surfeit of meditation teachers and methods. And the principal split seems to be between Vipassana, insight meditation, and Samatha, calming meditations. And people feel that it's one or the other. There seems to be some confusion about which one they should follow. So people have been very, very responsive to our, well, maybe more creative approaches to meditation, certainly broader, not just following through four stages, but thinking about broad awareness, its relationship to focus, that kind of uh, approach. Uh, people have been very appreciative. We three order members have arrived from different parts of the planet and we're, we're different in personality, we're different nationality-wise, cultural and so on. And yet, I think we've been able to work together as a team, come together uh, for the first time on the ground, uh, on the spot, and 
I think out of our communication with each other and with, with the others on the retreat, uh, people have realized that this is the third jewel you know, to, to the degree that it's in front of their noses and they can, they can relate with it. Um, so our emphasis on spiritual friendship is also very important. A lot of enthusiasm for hearing about the Dharma and particularly about my personal experience of it. I think the fact that I'm a Westerner really intrigued them. Very hard for them to understand the Western Buddhist order. How can we be full-time practicing Buddhists but not wearing robes? But I'm very responsive to our replies. The communication exercises that we did on the retreat the other day. Um, people didn't really have any idea what they were about. The room just erupted into this uh, hoots of laughter. And this was in the silence for the first just looking stage. When we brought in the words, the volume increased and arms were waving and uh, the laughter, uh, it was just Malaysians at their best. I mean, so communicative, so warm, actually really responsive, really trying to work out what the practice was. Most of the members from our group attended the retreat, either full-time or part-time. And uh, well, everyone expressed that they have, they have learned something of value to them. So um, yes, everyone do benefit in various ways. Some benefit from meditation. They could extend their sitting periods. Some from uh, the studies, the discussions. And some from the communication. We strengthen my conviction that the way we try to practice Dharma in the West yeah, is very, very much applicable here. It's not a Western way. Yeah? It's just a way of really translating the Dharma to life and looking at our lives in terms of the Dharma, but in a very practical, concrete kind of way. So that works here. That works in other countries. It fills me with confidence. It will work in mainland China as well. And so I'm, I find that very, very satisfying.